Hello again. Many people have been leaving comments asking for a further update on our adventures with Vehicle to Grid. We have reached a tipping point in the saga, but we felt we needed to know what was going to happen next before making this fourth video. The fact is, right now, we don't know what will happen next. However, we've chosen to make this summary anyway because our Nissan LEAF is now exactly three years old and the huge changes in energy prices and the end of our current contract with OVO have caused us to rethink. It looks like we may be coming to the end of our time with OVO and changing from vehicle to grid to vehicle to home. More of that later. Our two-year trial officially finished in November 2021. OVO has always said that they would continue the scheme until 2025 and we've been so pleased with the results that we have carried on. Let's fill you in on the figures for our entire time with V2G from the beginning of no November 2019 to the end of August 22. In doing this, we've found a few surprises too. We extracted all the monthly data from the Calusa app, and this is what we find. That's a bit impenetrable, so let's have a look at this as a graph. 34 monthly figures, red indicating imports to the car, yellow being the car sending electricity to our home and the grid. Even this is somewhat confusing, so let's total it all up. Over the almost three years we have been on V2G, our car has imported a total of 16.6 megawatt hours and exported nearly 10 megawatt hours back to the grid. Most of the difference between these figures can of course be accounted for by driving the car. So let's try to work out the totals for that. Drive Computer 1 says we have averaged 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. The car's energy economy meter says we have averaged 3.6. And our energy economy history says the best we have managed recently is 3.8. So let's agree on 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour as being a fair average. OK, so in its first three years, our car travelled 22,176 miles. Let's say 21,000 of these have been done during our time with Vehicle to Grid. Dividing 21,000 by 3.7, we find the car has consumed around 5.6 megawatt hours whilst on the move. So let's add that to our graph. There we are. It's a bit simplistic to point this out, but I think it's interesting that this latest figure fits nicely into the gap between imports and exports, less a few percent for inefficiencies. Of course, we have charged when away from home on trips and holidays, so it's not a true picture but it's interesting nevertheless. So 5.6 megawatt hours powers the car for 21,000 miles. The total imported to the car in the last 34 months was 16.6 megawatt hours. To our car battery, therefore, that is the equivalent of driving over 62,000 miles in 34 months. Vehicle to grid has exercised our battery three times more than we have by driving. OK, so now you're all waiting to see if our car battery has dissolved into a puddle of metal and chemicals. Let's find out. The car's own battery capacity indicator still shows full, so things can't be too bad. Let's see what Leaf Spy Pro shows us. Here's a screenshot from 8th of September 2022. The headline figure is, of course, the Battery State of Health, SOH, which is now 93.85%. When the car was new, we were used to seeing around 240 miles of range on the gasometer. We would expect, therefore, 
to see around 225 these days. However, we are really pleased to be seeing very similar guessometer range figures to those we saw when the car was new. Here's a recent screenshot from the app. And here's a shot of the screen itself. While we're here, let's just notice again the number of so-called quick charges the car has registered, 799. This figure actually means, of course, DC charges. So it's counting up the number of times the car has been plugged into Indra's Chademo charger and, of course, a few rapid chargers whilst we've been away from home. Right, so the car seems to be doing just fine. And as we've said before, we believe V2G kept our battery healthy during the COVID lockdowns when the car barely moved for months. So let's move on to the final question, the money. We've put together all our OVO figures for electricity and gas and vehicle to grid export credits for the entire time we've had V2G. That's the 34 months from the beginning of November 2019 to the end of August 22. We'll do as we've done previously and scroll through them. Pause the video to examine them as much as you wish. The end result is that after two years and ten months of V2G, our total expenditure on energy, electricity and gas amounted to £2,124. That averages out to just £62.47 a month. I promised you surprises. So let's take a closer look at the electricity alone. We paid £4,034 for electricity but we were paid 3,670 for sending some of it back. If we deduct the 3,670 pounds V to G payments from the 4,034 pounds we paid, we discover our electricity for 34 months cost us just 364 pounds. And that of course includes all our travel except when we charged on public chargers while away from home. You can see why we were happy to continue. Frankly, if we could carry on like this, we would. But times energy costs and energy supplier tariffs are changing. We used to buy electricity at a flat rate of 14 pence per kilowatt hour and sell it for 32 pence, over double what we were paying. However, OVO now tell us they intend to charge us 45 pence per unit and buy it for cost plus 11 pence. This hugely changes things, of course. The end result is that we have applied to join the Indra Vehicle to Home V2H scheme. The idea here being to minimise importing from the grid and use the car to store solar energy and electricity bought cheaply in the small hours. The plan is the car battery will power the entire house during peak hours and darkness. Of course, Vehicle to Grid already does some of this. Stephen shot this impromptu phone cam video last winter. I think this is fascinating. We've got a, a casserole in the oven. We've got stuff boiling away on the hob. We've got fans, we've got lights, we've got all sorts of things. Uh, we've got a couple of computers on in here, we've got lights on in there, and yet we're still sending 1.64 kilowatts to the grid in total darkness. How? Where's it coming from? It's coming out of the car. Our car is actually right now powering all this lot and sending 1.6 kilowatts to the grid. You just saw our car providing the power to cook our evening meal and power everything else in the house without help from the solar panels. But of course we were still sending the excess electricity to the grid. With a vehicle to home system, 
we will hold on to that extra and make sure we use it ourselves rather than buying it from the grid later on. This will doubtless mean changing electricity suppliers to one with a low overnight rate. So it's all up for grabs right now and of course we'll let you know what happens. That's it for the moment and as always thank you for watching. Do keep your comments coming, we try to reply to everyone. If you want to be sure of seeing future updates, you know what to do. Bye for now.